You know, these statements by Donald Trump, I think, are the most reckless statements made by any American leader in 70 years. Because every American president of both parties, Republican and Democrat, has understood that we're going to be stronger if we have allies. Our taxpayers don't have to shoulder the financial burden. Our soldiers don't if we've got allies. I found that out on 9-11. I was the American ambassador to NATO. When the European allies in Canada came to us after the Osama bin Laden attacks and they invoked Article 5 of the NATO treaty and said, we will work with you and defend you, and all of those countries are in Afghanistan, they went in 2003, and they're still there now. And so um, we should want to have allies in the world. We shouldn't want to be isolated from the rest of the world. And to suggest, as Donald Trump did to the New York Times last week, that he would not commit to defend our NATO allies, Poland and the Baltic states, should Russia attack them. No American leader of any party has ever evinced any doubt, because that's a gift of Vladimir Putin, and that ruins strategic deterrence, which you've got to have to, to contain the Russians. So I think these statements um, are the most damaging statements that he's made on foreign policy as a presidential candidate. And in my view, as a former diplomat, they disqualify him from office. He's not fit to hold the office. Ambassador, is there any argument to be made that any members of NATO are not paying their fair share? Uh, we've been making that argument. Every administration has made that argument for the last 30 years. There's no question that a lot of the European allies, mainly the continental allies, need mm -hmm. to do more. Now, since Putin invaded Ukraine in 2014, 20 of the 28 allies have actually increased defense spending. But the most important is Germany. They've just issued a white paper on defense, meaning a, a policy paper in the German government. And Angela Merkel herself has said that Germany needs to step up and under her leadership, she wants to get Germany to the NATO baseline of 2% of gross domestic product. So there's no question that the Europeans need to do more. But Donald Trump's not the first person to stay, say that. Ambassador, though, is, is, there, the, is there any argument to be made that, and, and he's made it before, that he is, he's a negotiator, that, the, that these hard and fast positions aren't necessarily hard and fast so much as they're negotiating positions to sort of force an issue? This is not a protection racket that we're running here. The way Donald Trump speaks is if it's a protection racket. If you don't pay up by Monday morning, I would draw my support. That's not how NATO works. It's not how the United States under our toughest presidents, uh, Ronald Reagan, Dwight D. Eisenhower, John F. Kennedy, they haven't taken this view. Donald Trump has no negotiating experience with, with foreign governments. He's used to commercial real estate where everybody's an adversary. But if you're president of the United States, you have to lead the alliance not denigrate it. And here's what's unusual about his campaign. He takes every opportunity to denigrate the NATO alliance, our allies, and every opportunity to treat Putin with kid gloves. It's a strange way to think about being president. Hey, CNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Here you're going to find videos packed with all of the information that you need to be smarter about your finances. You can subscribe by clicking right here and click on all the videos around me or the I right here to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.